All right, gonna make a little video for uh, Mark, Faster Cats. And uh, he's doing some cylinder head work on his uh, big block, his uh, motor for his Camaro for Bubba. And uh, I was gonna throw my two cents in, show you what I got, how I do it, and uh, why I do what I do. I don't do a lot of cylinder head videos on YouTube, but uh, I've got quite a bit of experience in cylinder heads. I used to do them quite a bit. Used to be getting metal taken out of my eyes about every other week. And uh, got out of the head porting deal when they came out with CNC heads. Most people just buy a CNC head now, and people don't want to pay for port work because uh, this is something that takes hours and hours to do. If anybody's ever done this, you guys, I'm not telling you anything new. A uh, couple things to consider if you're doing a street big block with today's fuel is the uh, combustion chamber shape. A uh, closed chamber head yields a very high compression, even with a flat top piston. So you might want to consider the uh, compression ratio before you go too far on those heads. Uh, the other thing is the valve seat. Uh, you can see this is a 049 head and uh, it's got aftermarket unleaded valve seats installed in the exhaust because these are uh, not hardened seats from the factory. They rely on the lead and the gas from the 70s to lubricate the valve seat. So anytime you uh, take the lead out of the fuel, you have to put a supplement in there or you have to put a hardened uh, exhaust valve seat in or you're gonna burn the valve seat prematurely. So that's something that we did on this set of heads. Uh, if you're gonna do very low miles around town, you know that's something that's not gonna be a problem, but if you get into doing some long cruises, interstate driving, it can be an issue. Uh, the lead also lubricates the valves. Uh, uh, Mark said he got bronze guides that are self-lubricating, so that eliminates that problem, but the seats uh, are not hardened in the factory head. Uh, <clears throat> The uh, 049 is the head that I like. Uh, the other head of choice in the oval port would be the uh, 781, which is, uh, that's what this set is here, 781s. Uh, they have a pretty good uh, combustion chamber design there. They have a large intake and exhaust valve and a, a decent runner. There are the uh, large oval ports, not the medium or the peanut plugs that are found on the uh, RV situation or trucks. Uh, as far as uh, port work on a big block, the most critical area would be the uh, valve seat area. When you take a look at this head here, this is uh, the head that I just cleaned up a little bit for demonstration. But uh, if you zoom the camera in there and I can hold it steady, you can see this uh, machined area. This is a ledge that's right under the seat. And you can put your hand in there and feel that ledge. That needs to be eliminated to increase the flow. There's a couple ways to do this. You can go in with, by hand and uh, Use a carbide tit such as this and uh, you know smooth that out and then go in with your sanding drums and uh, hit it with some 80 grit on the Rolox disc there are the drums such as these. Uh, you can see this set of heads has been done. This is a set of 049s for my Nova. Uh, let me see there. You can see there's no uh, obstruction under the valve. So when the valve opens it's flowing and uh, that's about 30-40 horsepower on a dyno and probably about 30 points or numbers on a flow bench. Uh, this, the seat area is critical. Now you can use the uh, carbide tip like I referred to or you can take them to the machine shop and they have a fixture that is run off the guide there and it's called a bull hog. And what it does is it goes in there and machines under the seat. Usually if you get a performance valve job, they'll incorporate that into it because if you got a shitty bowl, it doesn't matter how good your valve job or your port is, this is going to interrupt your flow and cause you trouble. So, you know, you should almost be a straight shot when you're done in there. Uh, this is a street port here on this head. This is a set of oval ports. And uh, that's the finish that I leave the ports in. I, I leave them in 80 grit. I don't know if you can uh, see down in there. They're pretty clean. All the casting flash has been taken off. The bowls have been done. They're ported all the way through. They're not just... Uh, Funnel heads, as a couple of the YouTubers refer to some cylinder heads. There's a couple of YouTube uh, cylinder head guys, and uh, they have some really good videos. I want to try to get some of those guys, and I'll send you a link to some of them, Mark, because they have some really good tips on uh, the type of cam you're going to run, <clears throat> the low lift type of uh, performance, and uh, you know different tricks you can put on the valve seat angles and stuff that uh, complement that type of cam. Uh, this is a set of 781s. I think, you know, personally, I know that you want to use the closed chamber, but uh, I would uh, 
give you these heads if you want to pay for the shipping the 781s this is a good set of castings i have and uh again it's the the nice oval ports you can see they're they're almost gasket matched to the felpro gasket right out of the box they're uh, really nice the water jackets are really nice on them and this is a preferred head to a couple of the guys that uh do some big block stuff on youtube they like the 781 oval port uh it would probably be better suited and you're probably going you know, to have a much better piston selection these have much better flame propagation than the closed chamber uh they don't have a, a good flame travel and uh, they can be hard to tune on the street especially with a 110 lobe center it could be uh, a pinger you know it could detonate uh, if you don't get the cam timing right so uh that's sort of my take on the uh finish on the port you know you don't want to polish it uh these exhausts have been sitting for a while they're ported too but uh they're smooth you know and uh you can polish up the exhaust port to a high polish if you want. You don't want to polish the intake unless you're going to turbocharge, you know. You want to leave it in the 80 grip finish, the sanding roll. Uh, a lot of the guys uh, and the super stock guys that I used to mess around with when we used to do a lot of flow bench stuff, they uh, went as far as to leave them in the uh, intake ports in the uh, burr, you know, in the carbide bit finish. And uh, if you look at a CNC port, it has that same finish, you know. And a lot of guys say that atomizes the port a little bit. And, uh, you know, I don't know. I, I say when you go in there with a grinder and you port it, you can always pick the numbers up. When I worked for Brad Anderson, we used to uh, have the CNC ported Hemi heads. And uh, they were pretty nice right off the CNC machine. But you could always go in there and enhance the turns and clean them up a little bit and make them work a little better. So the main thing is to get them smooth, you know. Make sure your spark plugs are nice around the plug. Put your plug in there. Smooth out your... Uh, your uh, combustion chamber so you got good flame travel and uh, the other I can't stress is the uh, bowl area is the most critical you know you really don't need to gasket match and stuff the bowl is where it's all at unless you're gonna get in there and you know open the port up a little bit with the carbide tip you're not gonna remove a lot of material with the sanding drum and if you try to remove a lot of material with these you're gonna find that it's gonna get wavy on you uh, like tinfoil waffly <laughs> The other thing that's really critical that I can't stress enough if you're going to run an aftermarket valve spring and a camshaft with any kind of lift on it is a, you know, a stainless steel valve, uh, something that's not two-piece. Uh, a lot of people don't know that most passenger car valves are two-piece. They have a head and the stem and they're bonded together and uh, that pulls off if you add spring pressure. Uh, that's when the problem shows up. That's why they go to a stainless steel valve, one piece construction. And uh, that's why they say one piece. You know, a lot of people are like, well, all valves are one piece, and they're not. Uh, this valve is uh, reduced at the stem. It's a ProFlow. Uh, I believe these are manly. These are sort of expensive. Uh, you can uh, get a really nice uh, valve spring, valve, and valve guy, or uh, seal kit combination at Competition Products. They have some really good stuff as far as uh, valve combinations for pretty reasonable. Uh, you can buy a stainless steel uh, set of valves for, I think, under $200, you know, from them. And it's really good insurance because uh, nothing's worse than having one of these valves hit the piston and, uh, you know, break the head off. That's what happened to this motor. Uh, didn't damage the guide or anything. The valve was so weak that it hit the piston, exploded the piston, it was cast. And, uh, you know, he didn't have the spring set up for the high lift cam. And when it broke the spring, it dropped the valve down into the uh, cylinder far enough where the piston intruded onto it. And it detonated the piston and uh, snapped the head off the valve. And uh, didn't damage the heads at all. So, you know, if you'd like these heads... I started cleaning up the combustion chambers and started looking at these because uh, one of my friends on YouTube that does a lot of head porting said that uh, these were a little better casting than the 049s and I've never had a set of uh, 781s and I was going to give them a try. But uh, you know if you'd like to uh, you know use these heads and you know you think the compression thing I would definitely check the compression and try to come up with an idea of you know your deck height. and. A rough idea of what your compression is going to be before you slap those on because uh you know it can make the difference between a car that's uh drivable and a car that's not drivable and you want to be able to drive your project you know uh if you're going to have to buy race fuel it's not going to be any fun you know uh that's the deal i have with this baby i have to run 118 in it and it's uh 17 a gallon now so 
Uh, now is the time where you can make those decisions, you know, uh, you know, just do a rough calculation of where your compression ratio is going to be and if pump gas will support that, you know. Uh, if you're going to run those closed chamber heads, uh, you almost have to run a dish piston with those to get the compression to, a, you know, a 93 octane suitable thing. Uh, but uh, these would be a really good deal for you. And I know you're on a budget. I could bow job them for you before I sent them, you know, and... Uh, I don't want to do free port work. You can do that, <laughs> but I'll definitely do a valve job for you on them and uh, bolt them together and send them your way if it's something that you think you might be interested in or uh, need after you calculate your compression. So that's uh, just a tip. I've used these 049s. I've got several cars. I think I showed you Ron's Nova, and it runs 1060s with street tires and mufflers. It's a... Uh, 60 over 54 it's got a like 607 lift uh roller in it with a dominator on it 1050 dominator and it runs 1050 is pretty consistent and it's got its little oval ports and uh i didn't do the heads on ron's car uh, actually a uh, guy jim fitzpatrick that's a famous head porter in our town he uh messes with a lot of super stock stuff and him and ron had a cylinder head shop and they actually spray welded the intake port smaller and uh, pick the airflow up on those heads. Uh, Jim does a lot of that weird stuff with the super stock guys, you know, shrinking the port, uh, the velocity instead of uh, volume. So uh, they work good on Ron's car. I'm curious to see if these are going to be faster. I'm pretty sure they will be. And, uh, you know, that's my goal. My car's always got to be faster. But, uh, you know, we'll see what it does. I've got a, you know, a solid lift. I don't have a roller and I don't have a dominator. So if it's just as fast or a little faster, I'll be happy. I'm running an 850 on this motor with the uh, single plane, open plane manifold, Victor Jr. And uh, I think my cam's pretty much in the same uh, band as yours, maybe a little bit higher, maybe 7,000 instead of 6,500. I do have a brand new thumper cam too that I bought for the uh, big block that I was going to use. It's actually in it. I have the uh, comp cam lifters there and it's the, the, the medium thumper. I think it's like 500, 499 lift. You know, I'm going to be getting rid of that. I didn't buy springs because I already had springs. Usually get all my springs and valves from uh, competition products. You can check them out. They have a really good site. And, uh, their springs and their valves are pretty reasonable. They have all different brands. Here's the uh, spring that we're running on the big block. Right, these are doubles. Well, it's a single with a dampener, and it's good to 650 lift. So, and I replaced the uh, rotator cups. That's another thing you want to do. Let me show you those. I'm going to take the uh, rotator cups out and replace them with these solid shims from Comp Cams because the rotators will break on the exhaust valves and that's never fun when that happens so a couple little tips there take them or leave them whatever it's a beautiful john Kerry day here trying to get caught up in the garage a little bit got the uh mustang over here my son's working on trying to get the motor and tranny pulled out all together and uh, that's not going too good this motor's a little different than the 96 this is a 2004 and it's got some uh variable intake geometry linkage on the back there that closes flaps off and uh it's all jammed up against the firewall so i might have to get involved in this and help them get it out and uh we're probably gonna have to go ahead and rebuild this motor now because it's so different the fuel system's different there's no return line it's just a deadhead to the rail type deal and the other one was a return line system and uh completely different so got the hemi out here got the parts for it gonna be getting this back together got the uh intake manifold so we're gonna get that built today i gotta switch the bolts over from the old one and the rails and uh get my water pump put on there get my fans and radiator in here we got some oil and stuff for it plugs and here's the uh intake manifold the 400 dollars piece of plastic so got this from chrysler i've cleaned this one several times and i just can't get into the uh the flat spot of the runner, I submerged it in safety clean for a couple days and every time I rinse it out I get one or two little specks of uh, metal out of it and uh, those little medical particles are so hard I don't want to take a chance of uh, you know a piece getting stuck in between the valve seat and the valve or have any kind of issues so 
we just want this route to be completely safe and uh, this way you know the guy can sleep at night and it's more so I can sleep because uh, that's the last thing you want to have is contamination from the intake manifold to destroy your new heads uh, like I said Ron my buddy had a head shop and last time I was down there he did a Mitsubishi head for a guy and uh, <clears throat> he had the mechanic put it on and they fired it up and pieces out of the intake manifold went into the cylinder head and it looked like a ball bearing got loose in the motor and uh, destroyed it and the guy was all upset with Ron over it and uh, that's a common problem man you, you know the intake manifold is the uh, nesting place for all that debris that comes out of the cylinder head it lands in here sometimes you can access it and sometimes you just can't get to it and uh, that's the case with this manifold they're very hard to clean you have this front section here that just dumps into the plenum and then these uh, these rams just dump into a floor and you can't uh, you can't access the floor so I feel better about this with this one we'll go with that I'm, uh, I gotta figure out how to get the bolts out that sort of uh, looks sort of tricky but we'll figure that all out and get the rail changed over and a few little uh, snap-on items and that'll be that still got this sitting around got to uh, get some help lifting this up and uh, getting the pan seal on it I've been concentrating on the uh, magnum though so and then I got Ken probably he'll come by tomorrow I don't know if he's coming tomorrow or not but he's supposed to pick up some uh, parts today for this I got the rocker shafts built for this I got to shim a couple more rockers and you know just fine-tune them a little more but uh, we need a header for this and uh, he's picking up some carb kits for the K-Rons we got to, to rebuild those and uh, stuff like that pretty much close on this one so the sheet metal goes pretty quick and then I got to drill a broken stud out of this head I don't know who did that I think I did but uh, I got to get that out of there and uh, yeah there's my intake manifold over there for the, the big block but anyway, let me go ahead and shut this down. Like I said, it's a John Kerry day here. Hope you guys are uh, warming up wherever you're at. I know there's some really nasty weather. You guys got some ice. Hopefully you get your power back. Hopefully uh, you know you're staying warm. And uh, yeah, hopefully everything uh, gets back to normal here soon and spring comes because uh, I know a lot of you guys aren't in the garage right now because it's so cold and uh, you don't realize how cold it is. Uh, it never gets close to what it is up there in uh, Minnesota and where some of you guys are at is uh, just bitter cold So uh, I appreciate seeing some videos from you guys. I know it's not easy getting out in the garage. I know uh, We got the Friday night 40. I love those guys Uncle Ralphie Maddie. They were out there freezing in the garage last night. They said it was like uh, 31 degrees and uh, I don't usually go outside when it's 31 degrees. I try to stay inside because uh, I don't think that tarp was giving them much insulation. But uh, it's cool of you guys to make snow videos and uh, go out when it's cold like that. It keeps uh, the videos alive on YouTube because it can get pretty slow when it gets cold and the weather gets shitty. So anyway, let's uh, turn this off. I'm babbling. Took a look at that hood this morning. And uh, I showed you a couple projects. I got the Honda in there. I want to try to get it done today, prime today at least. I've been working on it. And I might turn the camera on and uh, throw some videos up over at the paint stop. I haven't put a video up on that channel for a long time. So I might put some uh, Honda videos up over there, spreading Bondo and uh, doing some work on it. So I'll let you guys know if I upload some videos to the paint stop. It's been a while since I uh, did anything on that channel. I don't think it's uh, it's not a real popular channel. I tried to put some uh, paint videos on there, but uh, you know, paint work it's uh, it's very opinionated, you know, and uh, people are going to do what they want to do. So I sort of uh, strayed away from doing the paint videos, you know, so much. I don't mind showing you guys what I do, or if I do a video, I'll turn the camera on, but. I'm not trying to sell you on anything, you know, everybody's got their way to do stuff. And uh, I think it's best if you just let people do what they want to do uh, because it can cause a lot of friction and I'm not about the friction, you know. So I'm just about getting along with people, trying to share different things and, uh, you know, if you pick something up or if you uh, leave a comment and you want some help with something, I'm more than glad to help you. But uh, I'm not trying to change anybody's mind on this channel, you know, I'm just trying to make suggestions and show you what works for me. So, 
Don't get offended by the paint videos. I know some of you guys do, and uh, you shouldn't because they're not made to uh, offend anybody. And uh, hopefully they help more people than they offend. And, uh, you know, that's just how it is with paint work. You know, we're all going to have different opinions on it, and, uh, and that's just how it is. So that's why I sort of stopped making the uh, how-to paint stuff. I know a lot of guys want me to make those some more. And I think that's why a lot of guys stop making them, to tell you the truth, you know. Uh, I'm not going to speak for people, but, you know, I do talk to some people on YouTube that uh, some of us really enjoy watching that don't make videos anymore because they, uh, people are very opinionated when you do uh, paint videos or, you know, show different products and show different procedures that you use when they might be doing it a different way. And uh, so in, in the effort to not offend anybody or... Uh, rub the grain the wrong way I tried to uh, scale back on those kind of videos so and uh, you know it started out with those videos for sure I used to do a lot of the paint stuff and stuff but uh, you know the garage has become a lot a lot more than just paint videos it's a uh, it's a bunch of guys that have made some really good friends so it's more about sharing different projects just showing our process and you know like I said if you pick something up from it that's cool and if you don't rock on so uh, here's another set of heads I wanted to show Mark. This is some CNC heads I bought. And uh, that's the finish that they're putting on the intake ports. Uh, these are CNC ported and they just go in there and you know dust it up with the uh, 80 grit drum. So this is sort of the, uh, the finish if you bought a set of professional heads that you would see. And uh, so I think you were on the right track with what you were doing. And uh, the main thing, like I said, is the bowl area, you know, the more that you can uncover that valve and unshroud it in the combustion chamber, the more power you're going to make. So the important part is the under the seat area. And uh, usually you can get somebody to run a bowl hog, bowl hog through a head for, I think, like a hundred bucks, you know, and uh, it's a lot cheaper than grinding. Uh, I don't know if it's cheaper than grinding because, you know, grinding's free until the metal gets in your eye. And then there's always that time thing. So uh, a good consideration would be the bull hog, throw it in there and uh, let them machine the uh, under seat surface. And uh, that'll definitely uh, give you a big boost in your uh, performance, more so than matching the intake ports. So anyway, I'm gonna shut this down because I'm babbling on, rabbling on. And uh, you guys have a great day.